All right, everybody, we're back. Rogue and Paladin. I'm Rogue. I'm Paladin. And this is our first real official air quotes episode, I guess. We've did uh, a couple introduction episodes last week. So if you didn't listen to those, uh, check those out probably before you listen to this one. Or you can just do whatever you want. That's what I always do. So uh, As he constantly reminds everybody. I mean, uh, this is America, and I'm still <laughs> free every day despite, you know... We're not going to talk about politics. Well, it's not even politics. Like, I'll, 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 I'll ask him, oh, uh, are you free tonight? I'll say, I'm free every day. It's America. <laughs> um, living vicariously by myself through memes. Uh, so Ugh. for our first official episode, we're going to talk about uh, our first experience with D&D and how we became the Rogue and Paladin. And if I remember correctly... I was a paladin. The first, uh, my you first were, D&D game. You were actually. You came. You came partway through the campaign. So, we went to we went to high school with this guy whose dad had been playing since the game came out back in the seventies or whatever, and he'd been DMing. He'd been DMing ever since it came out. So I was hanging out at his house one day, and he'd been wanting to get uh, get a group of people together. He introduced me to the game. I wasn't one hundred percent sure what it was. I had. Or, you know, it had the, the reputation for, I don't know, demonic stuff or whatever. It was, I guess, I don't know, people back in the 70s manipulating their socially awkward classmates or something. I don't know. I digress. So, yeah, we started playing. I was actually a warrior. Uh, as my, my first character was a warrior because, I mean, I was just starting the game and it was, that was the easy class to do. We were, uh, the rule said it was 2.5, I think. I want to say it was 3, but you might be right with 2.5. He kind of he kind of modified it to fit his to fit a style. Party of two and a half. Yeah. He, oh yeah, it was two and a half. Uh, to begin with, we started with NPCs, and then he joined in. Uh, maybe I don't know. What was it eight hours in? Uh, he was actually they they, <laughs> they would give him they would give him uh, a little bit of crap for acting more like a rogue than a paladin because the reason he was a paladin was because we needed another healer. We had a cleric NPC, but we could have used somebody with a little more, you know, party utility or whatever. We didn't have we didn't pick up the cleric NPC until after I started playing, I think. You guys were relying on potions. Because uh, remember we picked up the cleric after we right, found right. We, we found the circuit and we were like, "Oh, okay." And then we started to put two and two together. Right. About who the last boss was going to be. Yeah, right. so we the didn't, you guys didn't even have you didn't even have a healer. You were all potions. You didn't get drunk right he was what did he play as was i don't he, even remember honestly was he a ma- i want to say he was a mage was he a mage i think he was a if mage. he was a mage he was kind of a shit mage i mean i mean yeah we it, know well, like anyone who knows the story knows who we're talking about he i i mentioned in the you know it was the first introductory episode about how the guy who I started playing D&D with, he used to get on my case about some of the decisions I would make. He was like, no, you're supposed to be, like, lawful, good, aligned, no, like, any like, digression from any of the, the, the paladin rules or whatever. You're supposed to be, like, hardcore. Da, 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 da. It was really quite odd. I'd just kind of give him a blank stare, look at his... Yeah, it was... I think I was like I was like a chaotic neutral paladin. We didn't have to pick our alignment for that. We didn't role play at all. It was purely combat with dice and a couple of decisions. I mean, you didn't. We didn't make yeah, backstories or anything. We didn't have. We didn't have the whole LARP thing going on. We got out in the backyard or whatever. Well, that came. <laughs> uh, well, right. Did you ever? Did you ever do that with him? The the the. He did that really. Oh, I never told you oh, about that. Man. Uh, well, we didn't actually like, play pretend or whatever, but. He made oh this stuff. This was an ordeal. He like made like he tried to get, get into making like PVC pipe. I still like, have I still have the sword. That no, that's that. Those were painful. That was an ordeal. That wasn't fun. That was an ordeal. It was a PVC. The weapons were PVC pipe wrapped in pool fanoodle. Like, and he, he was he was he was he was big dude, and he would go all out 100% at you and I'm wearing you know, karate sp- foam sparring gear or whatever and it's still like what the, What are you doing? I never knew that he was like into that. I mean like if that's what you're into then cool but like I mean he was in more into the combat sport part of it than the actual role like, playing oh, part I of am, it. I am the lord Sir of, of the yeah, basically. Um, 
I never knew he was into that. I, I used to work with a guy who was into that stuff, but he, like, got into, like, the role-playing of it, and, like, the stuff he from... wasn't just about, like, I'm gonna hit something. Right, he's from, what's, what, what was that movie that had the, it's a really crappy comedy movie, uh, Role Models. You ever see that movie? It was a crappy, it was a crappy comedy movie with, uh, I don't even remember who was in it, I saw it back in high school. It it one, like sounds familiar. But what, one know. of the characters in it was into the actual like all out LARP and role play, and typically when people hear LARPing and role playing, that's the that's what they default to. Okay. So, well, that was a tangent. Our uh, what was it? So yeah, I was a warrior, and I guess our third was a mage or somebody. Like, yeah. We're yeah. not sure. It's it's not important to the story, however. No. So this is one of his favorite things. So we go through the whole thing. Meanwhile, this guy, he's he's harping on us the whole time. He's been playing he's been playing for a while. His dad's a DM and he's he's harping on us the whole time. It's like, oh, why aren't you making this decision? This should be very obvious to all of you. This is our first time playing the game. Keep this in mind. So we finally get all the way to the end boss. The end boss is a lich. So something that liches are commonly able to do is is mind control magic, which you know they're gonna actually use in right. in, the, in a fight at the against end, three, at yeah. the end of a game. Your your opponent is gonna pull out all their tricks, all of his tricks. He doesn't want to die. He's a lich. Well, I guess He's he already does. Died once. I guess he sort of does want to die being for a lich. reference. A lich is an undead like. Think of like a really powerful a, a living a living person that became undead willingly for in exchange for power. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. No. That was how it was explained to me. Anyway, the Mickey Mouse definition. Right. So, our our third guy gets it into his head to stack all these buffs on our cleric. Our NPC all of our cleric. most powerful items, all of all of the powerful spells, all the weapons, like all the anything that's gonna that's gonna hit hard and it's gonna hurt. And we we did the math on it. He ended up doing like six hundred something damage, like with his one attack. It was some ridiculous amount. The way we played the game, the numbers were bigger than some of the more modern D and D rule sets. So rather than rolling. Uh, a six-sided dice for a sword we would have like four six-sided dice for you know an enchanted sword for example we found we didn't use gold at all we found a lot of uh, a lot of magic items so anyway we're a little apprehensive about this because we're like oh i mean this guy you never know what he's gonna do he's you know, he's, he's the lich he's we a should, lich uh, I mean, he's a mage can't he he's the last boss we should uh we should back up and think about yeah this. and he's like no no, no, no of course no. the wizard wants to kick the door in yeah i mean the warrior and the paladin are the ones holding back so he does it we're like okay if you insist and so the dm he rolls a dice he's like mind control on the cleric <laughs> He didn't. He didn't roll very high either. He rolled like a thirteen or something. Yeah. He was rolling a twenty, and he rolled like a thirteen or like a twelve. And mind controlled the cleric, and Paladin and I looked at each other, and we were like, "Well, well, we're fucking dead." You know, flip the table and let's uh, let's get out of here. He started. He started. He started kind of arguing with the DM about the. After that, what actually Keep in mind, happened? The DM was his father, though. He's not only is he arguing with our DM. He's arguing with his own father about how unfair it is. <laughs> we knew before going into the fight that we were fighting a lich. He had played D and D before. He knew from video games, reading D and D. He knew liches had mind control magic. So after, what did he think was going to happen? And then after an entire game of harping on us oh, about man. how stupid our decisions were, my how the turntables have tabled. Or how the tables have turned. <laughs> yes. How the tables have turned. And it was the kind of thing you could never give him any lip for after that, because he would probably go into some long like, psychotic rage rant about. You know, it would probably get. Rants, it would, yeah. He'd probably get political at some point too. He'd go for you know the end. Yeah, we don't hang out with this guy anymore. Obviously. <laughs> I told my uh, I told my newer group uh, uh, this story, or just stories about him in general. They and everybody just sort of like makes that face that you make when you're like talking about something, and they're like, "This sounds fake, but we know too much about humans." <laughs> oh well, 
You became you you stuck with a warrior after that. No, actually, I became a paladin after that because we we continued to play with the uh, with the same people. Oh, a few a few new people got added to it, and you weren't in the you weren't in the next campaign actually no. that we were in. It was me. It's because I had to work all the time. The only reason I was in the first campaign is we did it over spring break. So I yeah, didn't, and I was I wasn't working then. Yeah, it was me, that cheap guy, the chick from our computer science class. Right. Yes, and then. Uh, uh, him because we read it we read his house so he was his dad was the best dm and the only dm that we really knew at the time right yeah yeah I, I i didn't know anybody else who played this game anyway so the second the second campaign was it's pretty much the same things guy get on our cases about all the stupid stuff we were doing or whatever we finally come to the end and they're all uh, arguing about whether or not we should put the sword in the pedestal to move the snake statue because we didn't know if we were going to have to fight the snake statue even though the sword was very obviously supposed to go into the pedestal. They spent literally like 30 minutes discussing on whether or not we should put the very obvious sword in into the very, the very obvious, obvious pedestal. That very we could, obvious we, pedestal. It, was, it was very obviously there for that reason. They're like, oh, should we attack the snake statue or should we? And I'm sitting there I'm like, guys, the decision is very simple. We didn't even kill the last boss. We just we never went back to the campaign. We never got to that point. It was supposed to be some like plane shifter dude too, who was just kind of there for the heck of it. That was a fun campaign though. I had my favorite, uh, my favorite, my favorite paladin equipment in there. I had a ring that turned me into a giant rock golem. That was where I first learned what a tank was in the MMO sense of the word. He'd get mad that. I would I'd be attacking things, not oh you're supposed to pull aggro. I'm like excuse mm-hmm. me, I'm supposed to pull what? <laughs> what? He played World of Warcraft. I didn't play World right, of Warcraft. Yeah, I didn't know he what... played it with his dad, I remember. Yeah, who was a globally ranked tank on whatever server he was on, actually. Well, anyway, that's all we have time for today. Um, we're probably going to hit you up with a new episode on Thursday, so be sure to follow us on SoundCloud and like our Facebook page for the most uh, up-to-date information. The Facebook page is the, the best way to get the, the updates. Yeah, to get updates or to get in touch with either of us. Um Shoot us a message, let us know what you like, what you don't like, uh, what you want us to talk about, and uh, we will see you guys next time on Rogue and Paladin.